what we did on our summer vacation, a century-old Ponzi scheme explained, and preparations for a Raisin in the Sun rehearsals. It's September 1st, 2009. I'm Charlie Miller, and this begins season two of 10 Minutes to Curtain. Hi everyone, I hope you had a lovely summer. It's great to be back in the swing of things here at the Denver Center. We had a nice break between the end of Quilters and the beginning of this season, and I wanted to share with you one of the exciting parts of my summer vacation. Members of the theater company participated in the Perry Mansfield New Works Festival, workshopping a new play by Elizabeth Gregory Wilder at the summer camp in Steamboat Springs. I got to go along to see what it was all about. So here is a dramatic summer vacation. Okay, so it wasn't exactly what I expected. Perry Mansfield Performing Arts School and Camp is what it's called. During the summer, they have this new works festival in which they'll invite writers to come up and over the course of this week, uh, work on plays and development uh, with casts that are brought in to help do it and then they're given a, a public reading at the end of the week. It's a really safe place to come in and try new things with your work and see what works and what doesn't and uh, through that process hopefully make your play a little bit better. You're in on the creation of a new play which is really really exciting. It's not about a production, it's not about the actors, it's about the word getting the word right and get, helping the authors out. Well, my place is called The Bone Orchard, and it was actually inspired by an article I read about these places in the northernmost parts of the country where, because the ground freezes every year, you have to kind of predict who's going to die so you can dig their graves before the ground freezes. It's a love story between a young girl who's dying and a young boy who um, is in charge of the local graveyard. When we sat down and did the read-through, it was the first time she had ever heard the play out loud. The play's really new and um, I'm trying to get through some of the really big obstacles in terms of, of clarifying the story and the journey of the main character. This play is really evolving so I think like there are constant rewrites. Mm -hmm. We've had a new act one, we've had a new act two and now we're having more fixes today. So I've gotten a lot of really major work done and then I think between now and the reading tomorrow it's going to be probably cleaning up the little things here and there. Uh, I like to play a lot, and it's fascinating to watch because this week uh, Elizabeth changed the play significantly. It was amazing to listen to it tonight and hear how much additional material she put in, which is a really great sign, I think, of how valuable this experience could be. I know that you were like looking for your own summer camp, but this is our own version, and it was pretty awesome. We now begin with the first show of the season, a play called The Voisey Inheritance. But what exactly is The Voisey Inheritance? Here to explain is the one and only Edward Voisey. My name is Edward Voisey. I am descended from a proud line of Voiseys. Men who have served their country and attained the highest echelons of British society through hard work, business savvy, and financial acumen. My grandfather established the Voisey business two generations ago. My father inherited the business. And now, upon my poor father's unfortunate death, I... I'm the sole inheritor of the Voisey business. Shortly before my father's death, I encountered a problem with the records. There were no funds in the client's accounts. My father, the financial genius, was in fact a thief. He defrauded everyone who had trusted us. I had believed the business operated honestly, like this. Wealthy clients create accounts with our firm giving us large sums of money 
to invest on their behalf. We invest the money honestly. Take a small portion of the profits and return the rest of the earnings to the clients. Their money grows steadily because of our wise investments and everyone profits. Because of these successful investment decisions, our firm gains more clients. Our profits grow enormously, and my father and his family can afford the lifestyle they have grown accustomed to, and everyone is happy. However, it did not work this way. Instead, wealthy clients gave our firm large sums of money to invest on their behalf. <laughs> my father pockets the money using it to raise his family and endow his children. No investments are made. My father takes on more clients, <laughs> using a portion of their money to pay fake interest to the rest of the clients. The rest goes to Mr. Voise and his family. People appear to be profiting, but the only one truly profiting is my father. The initial money clients invested, nowhere to be found. <laughs> and that, all that, is my inheritance. My voicey inheritance. This past week, the stage manager for our next production, Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun, was busy preparing for rehearsals to begin. I caught up with him to learn about a stage manager's prep week. My name is uh, Christopher Ewing, one of stage manager's responsibilities and duties are, are to organize, schedule, and rehearse the show with the director and then maintain the production over the length of its run once it's in performance. This week is my uh, prep week. I am prepping for a show called Raisin in the Sun. A patriarch is passed on and left some money and it's about the rest of the family that lives in this tenement in the south side of Chicago deciding what to do uh, with the, the money that the father has left and there's different ideas and then it's how do we resolve that and the tension it creates. In our first read through is about a week from today, exactly a week from today. And uh, so this is some of the more mundane uh, work that I do but uh, the more organized I am going into a production uh, the easier it will be for everybody, including myself, once we're up and running. The exciting part for me, and different stage managers are, are different, but I enjoy rehearsing the show very much, and I particularly enjoy running the show. This prep week leads up to all that, hopefully, if I do my job right. Our 10 minutes are almost up, which means it's time for your turn. We are starting a Denver Center blog where we'll post a bunch of interesting behind the scenes information from a variety of voices at the Denver Center. But before we start assigning writers and developing content, we want to know what you'd like to see on the blog. So send in your suggestions. I'd also like to know if you have any new ideas for 10 Minutes to Curtain this season. So send me an email at 10minutes at dcpa.org. To conclude, I must tell you about the Denver Center's latest and greatest investment. We hired an online fortune teller to help you choose what shows to see this season. Here's a preview. Look at my card and I will tell you what show you want to see. This is your theater. What kind of play is in your future? What theatrical experience will change your life forever? Obviously, you don't know, which is why I am here to help you. So. Click here to have a private session with the online fortune teller. It's a fun and interactive experience, and there are literally hundreds of possible outcomes. And that's it for September. Tune in the first Tuesday in October for a new episode of 10 Minutes to Curtain. And make sure you check out the online fortune teller. I'll see you in the theater. Mm -hmm.